Just gotta figure out my sounds again. <laughs> Hey y'all, this is Cody. Hey, and I'm Sean. We are Pirate Aviation. Welcome back. It has been a long... It's been a while. Long time, long time. Pre-holidays, I guess, was I mean, the last uh, episode. It has been... It's been busy with work and uh, life and yeah. airplane it, shenanigans. And, and this is a lot of work. I is, mean, to all you is. YouTubers and podcasters. Kudos to you guys. I mean, you guys are rock stars. This is. is this is not an easy thing to do. You know, people think, oh, we're going to get on YouTube yeah. and blow up and do all this stuff. But there's some work. Well, and this is the easy part. Yeah, this is the easy part. The hard I mean, part is well, what you guys don't see. Yeah, the behind the scenes and, and just getting here. Yeah. And coming up with things to talk about yeah so. i mean we have tons to talk about i mean i feel like we're gonna be way, yeah we way too long today way too but, long but well let's get into kind of catching up i mean i guess really the last last episode we did was it was before thanksgiving i believe before thanksgiving and so uh, before thanksgiving what was going on um my plane was back from avionics yeah. and i was i think i was, was, I, was pretty, I was pretty much flying. finished with everything i was flying yeah um was Yours was waiting go. for paint. I was waiting, and and we the last one we filmed was we were talking about getting ready to leave for paint. So yeah, I did a bunch of stuff before paint in a hurry up get done mode. And, right, and, just uh, to get it there. Yep. Um. So yeah. So I mean, kind of start yeah, there. Start I mean, there. so the paint oh. escapade. You know, you got all ready. You had it bare bones, ready to fly to uh, Alabama, yeah. Selma, Alabama. Yep. And we did two ship and flew and delivered your plane. Yeah. So I mean that was before then I had replaced all the all the windows, yep. the windshield, the sides, everything had it all riveted because what I wanted is to have everything done, so that when it did get painted, it was not uh, I'm not re riveting or repainting or right. touching yeah, up. Yeah, having a like that. have any bad rivets. Correct. That you've got to retouch up. So then I also spent the money and did the knots to you wheel pants, which I love. Yep. They make that plane look incredible and uh we'll put a picture here yep um so i did all that stuff so yeah we flew out there planned the trip it was uneventful going yeah, out it was great flight going out there i um, mean uneventful coming back and and uh mm -hmm. it was it was awesome you and were that faster. was also the first flight with my new prop yes so i got got the new prop <clears throat> oh, yeah, in yeah, finally yeah. it actually came in early um the guy that i got it from brian sutton gave me the option of i could go ahead and get it now yeah and it'd be silver, or I could wait another four months and get the white one that I wanted. Yeah. So I've got a silver prop on the plane now. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So we get we get the get the plane painted and yeah. And so note to self. Well, let's back up a little bit. Yeah. There. There's a story with I, that. I mean, we're not going to mention any names. Not yet. But we'll talk about what happened. So I I I will just say this. Go local. If you can go local, yeah, or if, somebody that has been absolutely there's been plenty of people that have used them and vetted them, and it's worth taking it long distance to get your plane done. I, I called a couple people uh, locally, and they were, of course, twelve to fourteen months out, and and uh, this is back almost a year ago when mm -hmm. I started calling about paint shops, and the prices went from X Y Z to, I mean, they ranged. Quite a it was bit. Just six, seven thousand dollar range. So it, it's not necessarily the money. I mean, you can you can think about it. You're like, hey man, sixteen grand to twenty two thousand. That's a lot. However, it can be more. <laughs> it can be more. And and the question is, you know, there. What I have found throughout this process, there are a lot of people that do not know paint. Yes. And it's it's not even just the people painting. It's people that look at it. I mean, people, case yeah. in point. So. We arrive at the paint shop. Yeah. And there is a guy leaving the paint shop. Local. It, a local. Yeah, he's, actually he's local just... to where we are. And uh, um, we're looking at the finished product on his plane. I didn't look really close, but Cody was looking it over. And, and I felt very uneasy. Yeah. So that was the first red flag. Yeah. You know, you weren't feeling the love. No. We should have just 
put the brakes on yep. and flew home. Yep. I mean, as hard as that would have been at the time, that's what we should 100%. have done. We should have flown home. There's a lot of inconsistencies. There's a lot of orange peel. Um, and and the biggest issue was how the striping and the overlapping was. Mm-hmm. And the, how, the lines were how, really how rough. How thick they were. And so... Yep. We we mentioned it to him. I brought it up, and I yep, said, "Hey," and he's like, "Oh, don't worry. You know, we'll, we're we're yep. gonna do it special. You know, so you 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 want to trust him, you know, because he's a super nice guy, and had a pretty decent setup, and a very great you, setup. You, you you always want to have faith in people sure. until they let you down. But you know, if you're dropping close to twenty grand on yeah. something. I don't, yeah. I don't know how much faith you need to have. You know, um, and, and, you need to have facts. And the price, honestly, between him and the people locally was like two to three grand mm-hmm. at the time. Now, yep. I did go back at, from April to June uh, before I made the decision to go to Alabama. I, I had went locally to a shop that went from eighteen five to $26,000. Mm-hmm. And in the course and of a few material months. has not gone up since then. And of course, people like to use the word inflation to manipulate and they can. If they can charge it and they get it, sure. who cares, right? Mm-hmm. That's what we do. That's, that's what they're doing. Um, so. so anyway, I decided finally that guy could get in within a couple months. And I said, great. So October 26th, I missed my anniversary to drop my airplane off for paint. So uh, fast forward. I'm well, getting halfway forward. So, okay. you know, you, you know how I was with my panel. I was up sure. there like... Every other day, just looking and watching and hands on and asking questions. Yeah. Being in Alabama, you couldn't do that. So you could. The guy was kind of reluctant in sending Cody photos. So finally, you get a set of photos. And it's when all all the paint was stripped. Yep. And it was it was uh, a good progress. Yeah, it looked good. And and then you got some photos for primer. And, and some bondo, and, and that looked okay. I mean, yep. it, you know, not it's much hard, you can tell on that. Hard to see from photos when it's you know thirty feet away. But the big red flag went up when you got the photos of the black. So, all well, and I got so we'll back a little bit up. I I got the pictures of uh, the whole thing primed, and then it was taped off. Right. And I'm going, where's the white? Where's the base coat? Correct. Why would you tape off? Why, why would you do that? There would yeah. be there would be no reason to. So it, everything was taped off, and then came the black, and then yep. came the green, and then and then came... the white was an infill of all the areas that. And remember, I sent you the picture primer. because the black and the green was done, and I'm like, man, this looks incredible. And then you said, hey, wait a minute, that's Where's still the primer. It's not shiny. Yeah. And I'm going, wait a minute. Even <laughs> though the underbelly of the plane is all black, and then it's green, and then white. Uh, it, it just didn't make sense because you're you're taping off twice, right? Or three times, really. Be, you're you're taping it I mean, more times than you should. I'm no paint expert, but if I'm painting an airplane, and the majority of the airplane is yeah. going to be white, the base coat, that's the first color going. First on. coat. I would put that on, mask off, put the next largest amount, and then the the final the, amount. There's there's a process, right? Mm-hmm. With with the striping, with any kind of. Um, decals or anything that you're putting on that you do that base coat then you tape everything off and as you paint you're peeling that tape that yep. doesn't require the paint any longer right and well and i think and this is just my speculation that this guy was so terrified of w- trying to get the seams sure as smooth as possible i think he went in and tried to butt joint paint basically and, and i said Okay, and you're not trying to be rude, but at the same time, it's your money, right? Right, and your airplane. Your airplane and your money. And your and time and your travel. And everything. So everything. So it doesn't matter. You you should not be nice. I mean, of course, be nice, right? you got to be you, nice, but it's be business. Stern. It's, it's business. business. And, and, and we get out there, so let, let's go a little bit further. So we see that, and I'm... And, and I'm uneasy the whole flight out there, right? Mm-hmm. I'm going to Sean and asking all these what-if <laughs> questions, and Sean's... You know, hey, you know, and so we come up with a plan and a determination of if we get out there, if we get out there and the plane is X, Y, Z, we're just going to go because there's yeah. only so much. There's only so much that this guy, do. if he can't fix it, you know, can't do it right. You, you can't trust him to fix it, yeah. you know, and at that point, it's better just to have the plane local and then deal with the problem. Yeah. So we get out there and of course, 
uh, from afar, it looks freaking amazing. It looks from, incredible. From really, from, from 15, 15 feet. Foot, 15 foot paint 10, job. 15 feet. Yep. yep. Looks beautiful. It's shiny. It, it's great. You get up close and there's a lot of orange peel. Uh, the color is not so much. I was actually the, pretty. The black okay and the with. green look pretty good. And and as you, since this, I have seen a lot of airplanes with orange peel. Um, the way that people do planes now mostly are, it's just a single stage paint and they don't do it thick enough because they're trying to save on material, right? Mm-hmm. And they're trying to minimize extra work and, and money and so on and so forth and maximize profits. So they're not putting enough paint on there to be able to come back and, it's, and buff it. It's not floating it out it. and it's not in, in. What's the detail? You, you yeah. can't detail it. There's always a detail that comes after a paint job. You don't just paint, peel, and then you're done. Mm-hmm. You have to, there's a lot of there's cutting. There's there's a lot of different things that goes along with it. And so um, he assured me, yes, he did all this, et cetera, so on and so forth. I was really focused on the end numbers uh, because the last guy that that uh, that was what you didn't like. I didn't like it because it was too thick. Now rewind a little bit more. The guy that just had his plane painted shoots me a message on Facebook and says, Hey, by the way. Just know that when I went to go pick up my airplane and they, they rebalance all of the control surfaces. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. It gets better. Uh, hold on. It's <laughs> terrible. And. Yeah. Hit that one twice. Stupid. Anyway. So he, he called. He sends me a message and he says, hey, they had the flat bolts and the elevator bolts and the elevator bolts and the flat bolts. And we had to spend the night, and he put us up in a hotel, blah, blah, blah. And I said, that's great to know. So, of course, that's on my mind. The paint job's on my mind. We show up. We see it. We see all these spots. And I'm like, you know what? It's not bad. We can wet sand it for mm-hmm. a couple grand more. I can probably get the thing wet sand and uh, and detailed and polished out, and it would look great. And then I'm getting ready to leave. And, and he's pulling out the plane with a tug, uh, a hand tug that hooks up to a truck. And as they're pulling it out, my new wheel pants that are brand new paint job. He chips the paint on the mains mm-hmm. really bad on both sides. And I'm like, dude, what is this? And, and I'm trying to be nice. Right. And right. he's like, Oh, I just, he said one thing. I just want my, my clients to love what they have. And I said, in my mind, I'm thinking then give them a product that they will love. Right. right. And, and so I'm walking around and we're doing a pre-flight. Cause we said we're, he was, Sean was going to do one and I was going to do a yeah. pre-flight. So Sean goes so around. I'm focusing on all the control from, surfaces. And I'm going around the rest of the plane. And what does Sean find? I mean, it's unbelievable. So they had replaced the hardware for the ailerons and mm-hmm. the flaps. And on the, the Cessna, you've got that. I don't the know, track. The, the flap track, track. The flap track. Mm-hmm. And you've got your, your bolts in there that move up and down that track. Yeah. And there were... A, Three or four on each four. side. Four There's on two, each side. two on each side. Two on each side. Yeah. Well, the nylon nuts were just finger tight. It wouldn't even cut into the nylon. So let's, so let's stop right there. Yeah. If you have not built an airplane before, and if I have not built airplanes you before or been might, around it. And if you trusted a shop that they did it right, you with could really all, get yourself screwed there. All the proper sign-offs with everything. Mm-hmm. If you, there are a lot of pilots out there that just know how to fly an airplane. Yeah, they don't know the maintenance side of things, which is so important. And and so Sean catches it, and I'm I'm, I'm starting like again, I'm I'm elsewhere. So Sean mm-hmm. immediately catches it, and I'm um, I'm just like, hey, do you have the tools? And so, guess what? He didn't have the yeah. tools. So we're finally finally get the tools, and I'm fixing the bolts and getting them all, you know, the way they're supposed to be. When you're working with him, looking at everything else, and I then mean, I come across my brand new windows, brand new. Glass, $3,500 worth of glass, mm-hmm. and he got paint stripper all over it. Melted part of the Melted glass. part of the plastic. And then, and then orbital then sander marks with everywhere. probably 80 grit. Everywhere. And he said, what was his answer? His answer was, I taped it off twice. Yeah. So as you guys are thinking, like, what in the heck were you even thinking about going over this? I call it overseas because it's Selma, Alabama. But... Uh, <laughs> terrible decision right and you live and you learn and unfortunately it cost me money and and um still costing me money and it still cost me money and i'm alive right and yeah. and that's all that matters and again i i say it in 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 a it, it is just money because i can replace that but i can't replace 
other things, but at the same time, it still sucks. Yeah. So you learn from it. So it's a live and learn moment. I mean, so he says stupid things, right? And he's like, hey, by the way, you know, we, we taped it twice and I just want everybody to love my stuff. And, and I'm kind of getting frustrated. And he goes, hey, when can I get the last check? And fortunately enough, I only, I paid him too much, but I only paid him 16 grand. I owed him 18.5. And uh, um, maybe it was a little more than 16. But he it, he then goes, hey, by the way, you owe me another 500 that day. That I'm picking it up. He goes, you owe me another 500 for the more bondo repair. <laughs> and in my mind, I'm a business owner. So in my mind, I don't just randomly go, hey, surprise, here's another bill. Right. So right. technically, I think it was like $2,300 I owed him in total. So long story short. Uh, excuse that little bump right there. Uh, long story short, it it I didn't I didn't pay. I said yeah I'll, I'll get it when I get home. So we taxi, which that airport is a tw- fifteen minute taxi, easy. Yeah, it's so we taxi all the way to the field pump. Oh, I forgot it's about a, this. It's a it's a two hundred and eighty two step because I marked it off. You're welcome. A two hundred eighty two step from the field pump to the bathroom, which is the FBO, and then back. And so. It's kind. Of, it's kind of a rundown. It's an old military uh, place, and so long story, longer story short. Okay, it's it's not shorter. Sorry. No, it's um, not short. <laughs> we're not even close to them. Um, we get over there, we feel up, everything's fine. Sean, you know, we 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 briefed about going back and mm-hmm. and so on and so forth, and you know, of course, this plane hasn't flown in six weeks, and I again multiple fuel checks and oil checks and this that and the other. And I get in the plane and I'm Sean just started Mm -hmm. yours and you're getting, you're warming up the oil and so on and so forth. And I get in the airplane and I always do a brake check before I start the plane and my right brake goes to the floor. And I'm like, so I text Sean and I said, Hey, I have no right brake. And (laughs) And I I see a pool of uh, brake fluid underneath the wheel. And I have new wheel pants. So uh, I brought my toolkit. And you can ex- access the brake fairing um, over the nuts to you pant. And I did. And um, it's just leaking. It was leaking. It was just leaking. Mm-hmm. And and I think it, it was a fitting and it got, it was heavily painted. I don't know if that had anything to do with it or if paint stripper, you know, whatever it is. But yeah. well, needless to it say, wasn't leaking before. So needless to say, it, it's never leaked from there before. But mm-hmm. I didn't have a right brake. And I'm at an airport that nobody has tools. And um, it was, it's a ghost town. It, it's a huge, it's an ex-military yeah. airport, um, but there's nobody there. So Sean sends a text and he's like, well, well, it's your call. So we decide to go five and a half hours because the winds mm-hmm. were crazy. Uh, now, a little, little uh, side note on this. <clears throat> I don't think normally we would have come home, but... We've got so much experience in our Panthers losing a break uh-huh. and taxiing with one break, and you know those are differential steering. So um, I wouldn't recommend. If I wouldn't you don't recommend have the it at all. But I I also grew up uh, right after I got my pilot certificate, um, my private. I learned in my dad's 170. I went from a 150 to a 170, uh, and skis. Skis. Well, with skis. We took the wheels off. We didn't have retractable skis Mm -hmm. or anything. We took the wheels off, and you have zero braking power, period, zero. And I also would land on lakes that were just solid ice. There was no snow. And so the tail is actually what would hold you down because we didn't have a ski on the tail. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I felt very confident because you weighed the the options. We we talked about, you know, arriving, you know, we're going to land at, Long runway airports yep. where you can touch down, you can roll out, slow down. Sure. You know, and and, and again, we're prepared for when it. you don't have a break, <clears throat> your stopping ability is shortened by at least three quarters. Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, it's lengthened by three quarters. Yeah, yeah, lengthened. Um, it, it is and the turning moment. The too, turning you moment. Know, you've got to be really ready. Terrible. For just barely tapping on the good brake and counter turning Correct. at the same and, time. And rudder. And and you know this is why instructors really push quit using the brakes. Right, the brakes are there to mm-hmm. for an emergency essentially. Yeah, only. basically. Um, rudder, rudder, rudder. So, uh, so anyway, we we take off. Everything's fine, and we're flying out. And of course, we see weather around Shreveport a little bit, but it's not terrible. And 
And, you know, we see it up on the ADSB, and, and of course, our Dynon panels have everything, which yeah. is amazing. Um, but about halfway to uh, Louisiana, my engine is kind of making some weird noises, and the RPM is fluctuating, and I don't like it um, at all. And, you know, of course, in my mind, I'm like, I don't have a right brake. I'm frustrated about the paint. Mm-hmm and the process and everything and my glass and I'm just, my mind is, is not a hundred percent. So every yeah. little thing is putting me on edge and, and ends up finding out that I think I was just probably lean too much and I'm still getting used to the, the Dynon setup because before everything was just one gauge, right? My right. CHD, my EGT, everything. So um, I'm still learning that. And once I enriched uh, the, the mixture more, it went away, it and better. I think that's what it and was. And it was also, I mean, it was really windy, <clears throat> and it was gusty, and uh, so I think you were getting some fluctuations there as well. <clears throat> there were all kinds of things. I mean, that, at that point in the flight, Cody's really stressed. Yeah, and, 100%. You know, it's been a stressful day to start with. You know, they always talk about the whole chain of events yep. things, and that's what's going through my mind at this point. You know, I mean, we, we had the, the mental defeat of picking up yeah. your airplane then we've got the brake caliper issue and now you got these little gremlins that are in the back of your head yeah. you know with rpm and, and this sort of thing but here is where things start getting interesting you know it, it's getting to be evening you know our plan was to arrive at sphinx it was going to be dark and we really wanted to avoid that yeah yeah so what we've got going on weather-wise is, you know, we're flying VFR and we're flying, uh, you know, below the, the bases. It's pretty much broken mm-hmm. at that point, but uh, it's getting dark. I mean, it's getting prematurely dark. The clouds are really nasty. and <clears throat> It was broken around 6,000 feet, though, 55, yeah, 6,000 yeah, feet. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was fairly high, but... Uh, it was 100% VFR below that. Oh yeah, yeah. Until well, and and it would have been just fine, IFR above if you could get above them because they sure. weren't real high. Yeah. But uh, but you know it, it was just an uncomfortable thing, and then you radio me and you tell me you think it's snowing, and I'm like nah, it's just, it's probably just the rain because you know we're in and out of some pretty decent VFR rain you know that we're we're under these clouds are dumping some Uh, rain on us and we've got a video up. We've got full visibility of it. But, uh, but then you start talking about snow and I'm like, and you're, you're about seven, eight miles behind me. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, temperatures, you know, 35, 36, no, it was warmer than that. It was, it was 40, 41. Um, if I remember correctly, mine was when I said I had snow again, you're eight miles. Yeah. I'm behind you a little bit. So, I'm getting a little bit of flakes of snow. He's like, nah, there's no way. And, and cause he's like, man, my temperature, you were higher. And, I was higher. And, uh, when I say higher, meaning your temperature was higher, but you were, you were about four or 500 feet higher than, mm-hmm. than myself. And, um, anyway, the, the thing is, then it started to rain and, and, and we're playing checkers essentially, uh, within these rain pockets. So they're yeah. super small, but they're VFR rain pockets. And yeah. You could go under all of this, but sure. we're trying to stay out of the, the heavy stuff. So, and, uh, so we're doing everything a hundred percent legal and we're, uh, you know, kind of, and it's fun of course, but at the same time it's getting darker and it's getting colder. It's getting darker, getting colder. Uh, you know, there were other things that, you know, there was a, there was a King air that was yes. shadowing Cody the whole, whole way. Yes. He was, I don't know if he was above or below, he was, but he was right there. He was off to my three o'clock. Yeah. And at the point shortly after you saw the snow, the uh, King Air does a 180 yeah. and starts coming back towards me. Um, and uh, so I climb to stay above him, which I didn't want to climb because it, you know, put me yeah. closer to the the cloud bases. And uh, anyway, the he finally becomes no factor. But then I. I'm kind of looking out, and I notice looks like I'm starting to pick up some ice on my leading edge. So I grab my flashlight, look out. Sure enough, I'm I'm picking up a little and bit of not light black. rime. No, it's not black. It's kind of that dusky, yeah. you know. Just but, but with the clouds, it elevated. It seemed darker. So the darkness. So once I knew I was clear of that other airplane, um, I I dove down pretty quick. Um, it got back down to about four thousand feet. Yeah. 
Ice went away right away. It was warm enough. And I'm done at that point. So I, I radio Cody. I'm like, okay, we're done. We're finding a place to land. And so we were fairly close to Shreveport. We've got a nice track going into uh, Shreveport International. And I'm, I told him, hey, so I'm switching over to uh, um, approach. We're, we're going to we're going to Shreveport. So so I I do a 360 because I'm in front, right? And I do a 360. We're about 20 minutes from our next airport that I was going to stop at. Right, where we were stopping for fuel. Uh, and anyway, we ended up uh, landing. And as I call approach, I'm I get behind an Airbus and. And I'm this little 182 in a Charlie <laughs> airspace, and I got right, no right brake. And yeah. Sean's said he's picking up ice, and it's getting dark. And so, uh, it were, again, it was just one of those decisions. That, it was one of those things. That, you know, things were not stacking up in our favor. So, we, you know, we made the decision. You know, some people think that that may not be a big deal either. And exactly. There are a lot of guys that push through that, but you know, as, as soon as you start factoring ice into it sure. and night is coming and you know, who knows if the weather's going to continue to get worse because it was way worse yeah. than what was forecasted anyway. Exactly. I'm not taking any chances, yep. you know, I, it's, I'm done, you know, and, so, and we're, and we're hungry. So. Yeah. So we land at Shreveport. The big mistake there. Because I've never let, gone to Shreveport in an airplane. You know, you've got Shreveport International and you've got the downtown airport. The downtown airport apparently is close to everything, and it's more the the GA area. Yeah. Well, we went to International. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're landing at the big airport, which is further away from everything, and fuel's more expensive. I mean, it, you it, know, the taxi diagram is much larger, yeah. and you have one break. But they were fantastic. Amazing. So I got down, got parked at the FBO. Can't find Cody to save my life. You know, I know he's on the ground. And I'm out there with the ramp guy. And I'm like, oh, yeah, he's needing that break. So he's making what left turns everywhere to, to get where turns, you need to yeah. go. It's, and it's, then took a wrong turn. So he finally showed up. It was yeah. probably 15 minutes later yeah. after we touched down. Got the planes battened down. It was at that point, it, At was, that nasty. Point it was It was really, and they had said that it was sleeting there yeah. an hour before. So, you know, I was, it was the right was decision. Those, yeah. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. So we get a hotel and we find yeah. a, a, found a pizza place, found a some pizza, pizza place. and it was just good time. chilled out. Yeah. So, and it just, it, it goes to show that you can always land, right? Exactly. And, I mean, hopefully you can, hopefully yeah. you don't wait too long, but, yeah. but you know, you and I both always kind of been that way, you know, I mean, yeah. kind of sissy in a little bit of you know we're, we're gonna if it's not right we're gonna land yeah. you know and think about it on the ground and then decide i don't want to be what you read on a facebook slide that well, exactly says, i don't want to be on another youtuber's video sure. you know it's just not yeah it's just not yeah. worth it yeah well, what's it's the not point it. yeah. you know land and, and again that pizza was it was that was worth it it's good pizza itself. so yeah so so we're done. We're back. Uh, planes are back in the hangar, yep. and um, I get someone here locally who uh, who works on golf streams. He paints golf streams. He's done touch up paint stuff for yep. me. Really really good and uh, qualified. And you know I'm like, hey, can you come over here? I know you're detailed. Can you come and detail this thing? So he starts detailing it, <laughs> and as he starts uh, using 1500 grit uh, wet sand paper. Mm -hmm. um, it eats through the paint on the cowling, the white paint. Yeah, white was so thin. Everything else is fine. That, the white uh, is too thin. So now, because it's so thin, he can't wet sand anything else in fear of being done a primer. So he's like, I have to clear coat the whole thing. And he's going to put three coats of clear coat that will help with the ribs or the ridging of all the, right. the lines. And then, um, but mind you, it, it's it's... It's this thing that, like you said it well, it's it's like I'm in quicksand. Yep. I don't know how to get out, but I'm here. And it just, it's so slow. This is December 18th is when I brought it back. Yeah, December it's been a while. December 13th or 18th. And, and it's have, still being worked it's on. It's still being worked on. And it's time, right? Because I have, I have interior I'm, I'm getting done right now mm -hmm. i have sound x that You've i got all the on. other stuff that you need to get done before that mm -hmm. yep and and as the interior is all opened up i want i'm re having all the fuel lines replaced and and, and the, just the other bladder the other bladder i have now you have to fix your windows 
the window's got to get fixed. So that, that guy's waiting on me. So, um, it's just, it's very frustrating. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and so again, I say all of that and we say all of that to say, there's a, there's a mayfly. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, I say all that to say as much as you can try to go local so you can visit or a reputable shop. Yeah. I had, someone that you've had experience with or, or firsthand know, you know, I had two separate people tell me about their paint being painted from this shop and they're both 182s and mm -hmm. from the pictures, it looks great. And, uh, and, and they thought it was the best paint job. They had a local paint job, uh, done. Cause again, one of them was local and they said that the one that he just received was far greater than yeah. the other one. And I'm starting to think, well, I'm glad I didn't go to the other shop, but yeah, my no goodness. Kidding. I mean, okay. it's just that I went to another place. I talked to the owner and he said, there are only about five to 10 reputable shops in the, in the United States that do it well. And, um, it's just a live and learn. It mm -hmm. sucks, mm -hmm. but here we are. And yeah. I'm, I'm getting the whole fuselage, uh, clear coated and, and then the wings will remain ugly ish. Uh, until I find an actual shop that I'm going to just have them get redone yeah. and all the control surfaces. Cause again, I can't do anything to the control surfaces cause then they'll have to get rebalanced, which right. is another 1500 bucks, which at that point you might as well just bring it to a shop and just yeah. have it done. Cut your losses quickly. and just so redo it all. It's, it's very frustrating. Um, I, I want to try to win an award, but you know, it, it, again, you look at the EA plane that they're raffling off this year and it's a air coupe and oh, a really? paint job right now. Uh, it looks just as bad hmm. when it comes to the orange peel. Um, however, I guarantee you they're going to probably wet sand that thing and do a yeah. detail. So, so anyway, that's, that's what's that's been going on. That's the paint escapade. Yeah. So that's, that's it, been one big chapter of the awful. last number of months. Um, wow. Yeah. So, so that's enough about me. I mean, I'm getting, like yeah. I said, I getting mean, the interior done and, and, uh, you're getting there. You're autopilot getting there. got approved for, for Dynon and, and then it got, and then they, approved. then they pulled the, the, the pitch servo, again. The yep. pitch servo. So you're waiting on that, and which so is I, further ahead than me. You know, yep. they're not even any closer on the Pipers. Correct. So, so I want, we, I want to take it with the family to, uh, Oshkosh. Mm -hmm. And, um, so that's the goal. So yeah. hopefully we'll get that there and, uh, and you're going to go and I'm going to go. You just um, had something recently happen with yours. Yeah. I had a cool little thing, you know, after I finished everything on the plane, you know, I'd posted it in a couple of the different forms on Facebook, uh, Piper forms and what have you. And, uh, then I got contacted by a photographer and he was the, he's the photographer for Piper's magazine said, Hey, and Cessna. And, and say, so, yeah, Piper's Magazine, Cessna, and he does uh, Flying. He yeah. does a lot of the big magazines, but I think uh, I think he's the, the only one, maybe, I don't know, uh, but he does a lot of the Piper magazines. Yeah. So, um, and he asked if I'd be interested in doing it. I'm like, well, yeah. And he's like, okay, well, the, the editor's going to contact you, and you guys will, you know, let's schedule a time, set it up, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, long story short, we set up a time we go and we meet them uh where'd we go um mm -hmm. yeah corsicana corsicana yeah. you know because he the, we we're trying to figure out a good place to go that was you know kind of between us and him and yeah. he's down in austin area but he said you know having a lake in the background looks really good so we did corsicana there's a lake over there it's not busy yeah um short got there short trip for yeah, us yeah 30 minutes less than an minutes, hour yeah um, did all the ground photos and then we did, uh, some formation fly air to air photos and some sunset photos. Sean, and Sean made me clean his he, airplane. Yeah. He did a really good job too. <laughs> Pretty good. The windows were sparkly. Yeah. So, yeah. So anyway, um, it's going to be. I'm pretty sure that it's going to be in the April issue yeah. of Piper's magazine, which is really cool. It's pretty cool. So even uh, though it's not my airplane, yeah. I am, I am a Piper's <laughs> magazine model right now. Yep. <laughs> you will see me. Yeah. You actually see cockpit. you better than uh -huh. you do me. I know it's great. So uh, we'll have that little thing. And so I'm going to, you know, probably print off copies of the mm -hmm. cover or something and put it with the plane at Oshkosh and maybe, get recognized. I don't know. We'll I think say. it'll be cool. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm <clears throat> Jack, if you're listening, hook me up <laughs> when my plane gets done. I promise you. Right after that paint story. <laughs> after, after, well, it's getting fixed. It yeah. will get fixed. 
no, I, I think it's really cool because again, your plane is a sixty four, right? Yeah. And yeah. and it's very modern, and nobody yeah, ever looks at it and says, "Wow, that's a sixty four. Are you kidding me?" Yeah, it's. I'm real happy with it. I yeah. mean, it's turned out really it's good. Turned out exactly like I envisioned. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of like you know, in these house rehabs. You know, you see that old yeah. house and you can see what it can be, and you do it. And yeah. that's basically what I did with the airplane. It's, it's it a turned labor out fantastic. Of, a labor of love. It is. It is. That's a. And I'm glad of... it's not a labor anymore. <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> it is. It is not yeah. fun. Yeah. It, the, the, the. Yeah. So I will definitely be yeah. at Oshkosh this year, and Cody I'll hopefully should be there I'll with be his there. plane. I just don't know in what transportation. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so that's been fun, and and now um, we're doing annual inspection yeah. of my plane, so that's getting done. Hopefully, be done here in the next few days. Yeah. And then I'll be ready to fly again. Yeah, I mean, right now with the spring, it's like. I drive out and I'm like, I wish I could fly. After <laughs> I know, selling it's finally the Panther, getting warm. I, I know. I don't have anything. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Ryan has his Panther, but he's still in test flight, and I don't. Yeah. Wanna, How far? I think he's got like seven hours. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Okay. He's got. He's got a ways. It's been really windy for a it Panther has. lately, it so has. he's kind of been waiting for some ideal weather. Yep. I think so. Hopefully, he can get that knocked out. Nah, it'll it'll be. Would uh, love to see him fly to. Oshkosh this I would year. love that. Yeah, right. a three ship. That'd be mm-hmm. fun. That would be fun. That would be fun. Yeah, I, I uh, exciting times are coming. Once yeah. everything's done and and we got plans with the hangar to kind of yeah you know, do some upgrades here and, and you know and what we talked about back in the last episode you know yeah. getting into doing more flying videos. Yeah. I mean, in all honesty, we were set up to record going to take your airplane yeah. and come back and i got video but you know, it's not got video but my audio yeah it totally we're still learning you know everything was us talking on that trip and i didn't record any of the yeah. audio so we'll get there it, yeah we'll get there so hopefully you yeah. know we'll get some flying videos going yeah. and and start doing some you know small travel videos or whatever and yep. or have the podcast in there or flying around. Absolutely. Talk about it. I things. think that'd be awesome. Yeah. I think it'd be cool. Yeah. No. So, I mean, I, that's kind of an update of where we've been. Yeah. And, I mean, what's coming up, we've got, well, hopefully getting yours finished up. We'll yeah. do some videos of your interior going yeah. in, you know, kind of like what we did on mine. Yeah. Those, you know, got a lot of, uh, you know, good reception with people yeah. that are, you know, with that breed of airplane. Um, so we'll put those out and I, I picked local. Yeah. <laughs> he's right at the airport. Yeah. He's, he's two hangers over and he did Luke Bryan's Falcon 50. So, yeah. uh, and Sean's airplane. And so airplane. I could see it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Luke and I, you know, we, 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 we know where, yep. we know where to go. Tight. <laughs> uh, it, it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, it's different. Uh, it's different, yeah, but it's, I'm, it's fashion forward. It's, it is, uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to look really good. So uh, you guys will be. Hopefully you'll like it. Mm-hmm. I will like it. And so if you don't like it, it's my airplane. Sorry. Mm-hmm. But uh, it, it'll be fun. I'm, and again, we're yokes, everything. I'm, I'm going to, it's it's everything. Yep. And hopefully Colin will make a new panel and. Yeah, I get that squared away. Once I get that. That probably won't be pre Oshkosh. No, so no, I, don't I, think I wouldn't so. think. He's but... getting ready to move down to Houston and mm-hmm. and he's growing like crazy. And yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that, I think that's, yeah. I mean, really that's about it. Yeah. For what, what has been going on. It doesn't mm-hmm. seem like a lot, but between work and family and trips and yeah. airplane so, yeah, stuff. We'll try to we'll try to get a little more regular in yeah. here just with the, the video podcast yep. thing. And then we'll have some, you know, videos. I've been throwing up just some random short videos just to even put anything yep. on the, the site. But uh you know, we'll start getting some of that together and then we'll have videos of your plane getting finished. We'll do stuff going to Oshkosh. I mean, Scott's going with me up to Oshkosh, so who knows what you know, I'm sure he'll film sure. the whole thing. Yeah. So we'll probably maybe do something with him. I don't know. Um and then after that, you know, we'll just come up with some stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think, like I said, uh anybody that does a, a renovation of an airplane knows it's not quick. And it's not easy. Nope. And uh, but sometimes. once you get it finished, you know, since I can say since yeah. I've been there, I mean, it's rewarding. It's it, it's every bit as rewarding on the Piper yeah. 
is building the Panther was. Hmm. I mean, a hundred percent because I don't know, there's something like with the Panther, you know, it was kind of a showstopper and, uh, but, but, you know, there's only so fancy you can go sure. on something like that. So what I did to the Piper was kind of what I wanted to do when I was building the RV-10. Yeah. And, uh, and I think I achieved it. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, so. it looks fantastic. I love you it. You know, it, it's ergonomically perfect. Uh, it or is as perfect as it can be. So comfortable. Yeah. I mean, it's, it does not hurt your it's back. It's great. And yeah. the new prop, absolutely love the new yeah. prop. I mean, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. So. I'm really proud of it, ready yeah. to show it off. Uh, you know, if anybody's got questions or anything like that, put them in the comments below. You know, yeah. we'd love to, you know, interact with people and, you know, any ideas 100%. for future episodes, anything you want to see us talk about or work on or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, as Cody gets his plane finished, then we'll probably kind of segue into, you know, actual reviews of things, not reviews, but, you know, reports on things like what we talked about originally and just, you know, the random things going on of the day. Yeah, so. absolutely. Well, guys, thanks for thanks joining for us again. It's, uh, thanks for being patient. Yeah. We, glad to, glad to be back. Glad I, to be back in the studio. Agreed. So. Agreed. Thanks for watching Pirate Aviation. All right. Y'all right. take care. Have a good one. Bye-bye.